How's everybody doing? Ready for a drink? I am. Um, well, I want to say, first of all, thank you for having me here. I feel very fortunate to be here. <clears throat> first of all, I haven't been in DC in about 25 years, so I'm really excited to go to the Smithsonian and get lost in, in the hallways and have some fun here. But uh, I'm actually fortunate for another reason, and the reason is um, I'm a stage four cancer patient. And if I can do this clicker correctly, there we go. Um, I should, I should be dead by now. I was diagnosed in 2014 with stage four cancer. It actually metastasized from my colon into my liver and lungs. Um, and I had to have you know 15 hour surgery to remove two thirds of my liver, fourth of my colon. I had a bag for a year. Um, and you know, somehow I've gotten this far. Uh, my cancer anniversary is next month. So that's what we call it, cancer land, uh, which would be my four year anniversary. Um, and this has actually been a gift, believe it or not, a blessing for me, because I'm here for a reason. And the reason is to use this passion of this gift that I have and actually solve one of the world's biggest problems. And I don't know if I can do it myself. I doubt it. But I think with this community and with what's happening around fire and other, other things, I think we can get there pretty fast. And I'm here to show you today kind of my personal story. Um, I'm using my data across multiple hospitals um, to actually put together an integrated solution to look at my care, to manage my care with my care team. This is a very personal uh, presentation that you'll see here, um, and I'm happy to share it with you. All right, we all know the problems, right? I think I can get over this slide, but from a cancer perspective, I feel like we're being chemo to death. Anybody know cancer, uh, folks? I'm sure if you don't know somebody, they say between a third and a half of us will get cancer before we die. So if you don't have cancer, you don't know somebody, we probably want to get prepared for it, right? Because we'll know somebody very close to us that will probably get it. And you know, the issues are obviously data is siloed. We're going to try and solve those problems. Um, treatments are protocol. What I mean by that is giving people chemo is kind of the standard, right? There's not personalized medicine where you can actually look at my tumor, my cancer, and give me treatments based on you know, what I have, right? So I think that's a big thing. And then, you know, they always tell you when you go away, hey, call me if you're sick. And I always say, well, how about right now? You know, get, you know, there's no monitoring when you go home between cycles. And so I think there's a big opportunity to manage and monitor cancer patients when they're not there, right? When we're not being treated and give a more continuous view of that patient over time, okay? This is kind of the treatment protocol cycle for those of you that, um, aren't familiar, you kind of go in, you get a PET scan or a CT scan, you see how many tumors you have. With me, it's always multiple. Um, and I, <clears throat> you know, I'm always constantly battling. In fact, I'm gonna go into radiation in two weeks to get rid of a five centimeter tumor that's right here. Um, and I've been through many of these, I've been through surgeries, radiation, and the, kind of the same process happens where you take a blood test, you go see your doctor for 10 minutes, they spend eight minutes of that typing into the EHR system, and then two minutes kind of figuring out a quick protocol for what are we gonna do next, right? And it's very stressful on them. I don't blame the care team. They work really hard, but the issue is they don't have enough time and they don't have the data to actually make key decisions for you to make it a personalized experience, right? So that's kind of the challenge. All right, so I'm not a slides guy, but uh, let's just jump into the demo. I think the solution is really to provide that integrated view, and I call this, um, proactive patient care because what you want to do is you want to integrate all the EHRs in the back end. I've got five. And I think if you talk to any cancer patient, they'll have at least five because we're always looking for the next thing, right? So we're going to go to different hospitals to try and find that next best treatment. Um, so let's jump into the demo. If I can jump to a browser. Okay. Apologize while I log in. I've actually been personally developing this system for the last two years and um, have built this basically to help manage my care. So everything you see here is not a demo, it's an actual live environment with my data, as I mentioned. Sorry.
All right, hopefully we can see something. There we go. So this is a, a patient portal example that I built for myself. And basically what you see here, a number of different things. One is you see an integrated view. I don't know if you've ever seen an integrated view like this, but basically it's my timeline over the last four years across five hospitals, stitching together the conditions, the procedures, the treatments, the blood tests, everything in one snapshot. And so those little lines that you see there are actually uh, different events that have happened that I can click into and drill down and see more information. This is all coming from fire-based APIs that I've been able to consolidate and integrate and correlate. The idea is you bring it all together along with wearables and API data that you might get from you know, a watch or something like that, and then you present that data in a view that makes sense to whoever's looking at it. What we see up here are a couple of KPIs. I was able to um, track, basically, these are the things my doctor looks at, right? They look at bilirubin. They look at platelet counts. You notice my platelet count is really low because I've been ha hammered with chemo so many times, right? So if you want to drill down on that, you can actually see my data over time. And you can actually see where, for example, I went to the ER because I was neutropenic. Basically, I had no platelets. If I bumped into a wall, I could bleed to death, right? So you can see over time something happened here that has allowed my place to never recover, right? So I think part of this is not just looking at the data, but trying to understand the data and asking questions, why did this happen? What was it happening? You know, what was the correlation aspect of that, right? So we'll start to look at that in a second. One other thing you can do is personalize this experience. So your physician or the patient can customize what they look at. So maybe I might want to look at some other things. Um, this is a list of all the KPIs that I've tracking in the system coming in. <clears throat> Let's say I want to look at hemoglobin, sodium, and glucose, right? Click that. And then I can just hit save. It's going to save that, basically retrieve the data on that, and then show it to me in my dashboard. So those KPIs are completely customizable. I can drill down, et cetera. We talked about the healthcare timeline. Um, We've got some vitals, obviously. I always put those up there because those are the four things we always do when we go into the doctor, is they do these four things every time. And then we have a real-time streaming and analytics view. This is actually something like heartbeat, right? If I want to stream my heartbeat, part of what we're doing is actually building integrations from the new iWatch that came out into the system so we can stream the data directly from the phone into this streaming analytics platform. Every data that comes into this system, every piece of data is streaming in. Okay, it's not batched or anything. It's streaming directly in, which means I can actually look at the data. I can actually see the content. I can do alerting off of it as it streams right into the database, right? This is instantaneous or near real time. I've got a calendar view where I can, you know, record my activities. I might want to look at sleep or activity. These are things my doctor doesn't look at because they just don't have the data, right? Again, did I sleep well? If I didn't sleep well, I'm not going to feel well, right? Those are important aspects as a cancer patient. And I might have a treatment wheel. This is a neat little widget I built for myself just to kind of remind myself of my summer of hell of chemo, for example, where I went through multiple rounds of treatment. So you can kind of drill up and down, have fun with all the treatments I've done. I can look at all the scans, the last five, maybe the procedures. I'm very proud of my procedures. I've been through a lot of cyber knife radiation, liver microblasive surgery. Does anybody know what that is? You stick a needle in your back. Physician, I'm sure, right? Stick a needle in your back and they burn the tumor. So literally gone, right? And I get up and I'm in the hospital and they give me a, a hamburger and a nice meal and it's gone, right? That's the kind of stuff we go through as cancer patients. <clears throat> and then I might have a timeline here in terms of my medications. I thought this was interesting because whenever I go to the hospital, they ask me a list of the medications, what am I taking? It would be kind of nice to know what I took over time and is there anything conflicting that I'm taking, right? At some point in time, am I taking two meds at the same time that are having issues, right, when, they, when they're taken to, together. So, you know, again, it's not the data that's important, it's how you present it and how you interpret it, right? So I was trying to kind of play with that a little bit. So that's kind of a patient portal view um, that you can create, an example that I've created for myself and I'm constantly building on this, right? So how did I get there? Um, oh, and one last piece I think I wanted to mention on the bottom is genomics. So I actually did a uh, liquid biopsy. Um, and the results of that liquid biopsy came back, and I said, well, I want to see that data. And they said, well, how about a PDF file? And I said, well, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> I need the data, right? So I had to work with somebody to get the JSON file, but I was actually able to load that data in the system, and you can actually see pretty interesting stuff. So my tumor was profiled, 
And they came back with seven different mutations uh, on my tumor. And those mutations actually signal, in this case, different drugs that I can take that might work on my tumor that are not cancer drugs. Might be aspirin, might be something else, right? Based on my personal tumor. And then not only that, but what clinical trials are happening out there? Where are they happening? And who can I call, right? It's pretty amazing. Based on my tumor, I can call somebody who's doing a clinical trial and maybe get some treatment that I may not have access to, right? This is the future, guys, of precision medicine. This is real. It's not five years from now, it's now. We just need to get the insurance companies to pay for it. Minor details. <laughs> All right. Um, how did I get that data? Well, we integrate with the EHR. So I'm calling this the integrated EHR, right? I've got four of my ho five hospitals recorded. I started off at Stanford, then I went to El Camino Hospital, then I stopped in Chicago for some personalized treatments, and now I'm at UCSF, and I'll probably be somewhere else next year, right? So this is, again, my timeline needs to be tied together. I was able to do that by using this technique by pulling in together all the, all the hospital systems. So I've got about 175 systems I can integrate with. We work with our partner, OneUp Health, who I believe is talking tomorrow. Um, and they basically aggregate all this data for me, so I have one API call to retrieve all that data and then do something with it, right? We also integrate with a bunch of different wearables and APIs. A lot of these you're probably familiar with, Fitbit. Um, these are the genomics companies we're working with, Garden Health and Foundation Medicine. We have some environmental factors. So, for example, in Napa, there are all those fires, right? I'm an asthma patient. I was having issues breathing, right? So you want to get that data in. Um, and then also like Dexcom for diabetes monitoring, right, for sugar levels, where you can actually have a sensor implanted in your stomach, and then it basically records every five minutes the data which we stream right onto the platform. So very, very exciting technologies, bringing it all together in one place and analyzing it. Now, why is all that important? Well, it's the analytics side, right? So this is built on an analytics platform, real-time data streaming in. And what we want to do is manage conditions, right? So I've set up four conditions. I don't have all four. I only have two of the four. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can actually monitor and manage each condition with different KPIs and get different data out of it. So when you look at my data, what's important here is correlating over time what's happening what does the data support as I go through my life? So here's 2014, right? I got scanned and found out I got cancer. That was the best day of my life. Then I went through four rounds of chemo, and I had major surgery to remove my liver. Notice what happens, guys. There's a liver test down here, AST, I think it is, where my liver function spiked. Why? Because it was getting cut up, right? <laughs> so the blood test that I took is actually supporting the fact that I got, I got uh, treatment. Then I went through a bunch of chemo, went into radiation and surgery, et cetera. And then I got on immunotherapy, and I thought, wow, I'm going to be cured, right? Well, when you look at the data here of this liver function test, you can see that it's actually the trend is going up. And what that means is that my cancer was actually growing because it, my, my liver was processing all the cancer. So when the scan came, it came back with a ton of tumors. That's when my doctor ordered the genetic test. That's when they said we need to go back on chemo. And then you can see that the blood levels were turned down, which meant that it was working, right? And then finally, they put me on recently a targeted drug called, I can't even mention the name, because I can't read it. Um, <laughs> but you can see that those levels are dropping, right? So even before I had my scan, I knew confidently that the drug was working. And yes, when I actually went in, everything was reduced in my body except for this one tumor which we're going to go get radiation on. So what's kind of interesting here is this whole little experiment that I've gone through, you can actually take all this data of which there's a massive amount of. I didn't show you this stuff on the, this is a ton of data, right? It actually does support all the treatments that I go through and you can actually start to see trends in the data and whether the outcome of the treatment is effective or not. And that's what we look at, effectiveness or efficacy and toxicity of the drug. Right? If we can get a handle on those things, we can become more proactive, we can manage patients better, and we can give them more confidence and hope. Because quite honestly, as a cancer patient, you need hope. And you don't have any hope if you go in and you've got no data and you've got 10 minutes with your doctor, eight of which are in the EHR system. Right? So I think we need to empower our patients and our doctors with more data, and we need to have tools like this to, to basically analyze it and give us some outcome information if we can, can get there. Right? 
So with that, see if there's anything else I want to, any questions, comments? OK. All right. Um, let's see if I have any other fun things to show you guys. I think that's probably all I have right now. Um, so yeah, this is, I think next steps, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do some pilots at UCSF and Stanford and Kaiser potentially with 510 cancer patients. And I'd love to get feedback from you know, the physicians, nurses, and patients on what's valuable to them and what's not. Um, but again, I'm using this for myself and hopefully others will benefit um, so we can beat this disease because it's a terrible e epidemic. And uh, thank you very much.